Hey, what's up everyone? It's Jack Many Trades back here again with another video. And yesterday, Neural DSP just released their newest version of CoreOS 2.1.0, which as you might suspect, brings some pretty welcome and exciting changes to the user experience of the Quad Cortex. So starting off with the list of updates, they've added the ability to use CapSim and IR loader blocks from within Neural Captures. So that way you can quickly audition your Neural Captures before you actually go ahead and save them. This is really nice because now you don't have to save your neural capture, add it to the grid, then add a cab sim or an IR block to hear how it's gonna sound. You can all do that from within the capture screen before you even go ahead and save it. So that's definitely something that's pretty nice. It'll speed up your workflow a little bit. I'm not gonna show it right now since I don't have anything to capture in this environment, but it's definitely there and it's going to be a pretty nice and welcome update, I think. On the topic of cab blocks, every cabinet model previously included with the Quad Cortex now supports stereo versions, so you no longer need to add two cab blocks if you want to have a stereo pair of cabinets. So another thing that Neural DSP have developed is a light version of the IR loader block for both mono and stereo versions, so that way you're going to have reduced CPU consumption because they removed the room reverb from those devices. So for those of you guys who like to overload your presets, now you can use even more IRs inside of your presets. Continuing on, there's a couple of new and exciting amplifier and cabinet models. Starting off here, we have the Victory Amps Kraken channels one and two. Let's just go ahead here, delete that. Now, I have been playing around with this a little bit, so I'm just going to first show you guys that there's this now new badge, which will show up on your amps, overdrives, cabs, things like that. If we go here, you'll have digital delay, dual delay, have the yellow uh, new icon. So this is really nice. If you guys don't read the news uh, updates regularly, now, even if you don't, you can still see very quickly what's new and what's uh, been there before. So that is pretty nice. And I figured I'd mention it before we get into the cabinets. So moving along here, going to check out the amplifiers first, the Victor Squid channel one and channel two, those are going to be the Victory Kraken. So we'll go Victor Squid channel one. So here's what that sounds like. <laughs> Channel 2. We also have a couple of new matchless amplifiers. So we have the Matchmore DC 30 channels 1 and 2 and the Matchmore Hefe. Those correspond in real life to the Matchless uh, DC 30 and the Matchless Chieftain. So here's the DC 30 channel 1. Here's the channel two. And here is the Hefe. Coming with those, we also have four new cabinet models. So that's going to be the Matchless DC30, SIG A, SIG B, Matchless Chieftain SIG02, and Matchless Chieftain V3002. So let's see what those sound like. So we'll go into this cab block, change it here, and you'll see that we have a couple of new ones. So the 212 Match D30 SIG A is our first. <laughs> Here we have the SIG B. Here's 
the Hefe. And the V30 Hefe. So another thing that I'll mention while we're here inside of cabs is that now we have a new and updated UI. As you can see, it's going to be a little bit easier for you to move around your microphones. You also have the ability to change, of course, your microphones right in here. We also have IRs you can add in straight from here. We can add in, say, this uh, tool pot IR. And that'll replace the left side here. We still have the right side intact with the uh, matchless cabinet. We also now have an EQ built in here. So we have high pass filter, low pass filter. You can change frequencies for those as you wish. You also can change the output volume. So that is pretty cool. We also have a pretty nice uh, change to the UI where now it uh, looks like sliders um, rather than the standard uh, knobs. So we also get an additional four effects. So coming in with fuzzes, we get the GHS Bender 1973 London. So we'll just check out what that sounds like. Change device here. We'll go to overdrives. And that's going to be the Mark III silicon fuzz. So here's what that sounds like. So that is going to be the new fuzz. We also get reverse delay mono and dual reverse delay. So I actually already have the digital delay here. So we'll just go ahead and make it a uh, reverse delay. We'll check out the mono version first. So that's what that sounds like. We can also change here, go ahead and try out the dual reverse delay. This may not work out so well since we're only using a mono channel, but we'll see. Alright, so that's what that sounds like. We also get a volume pedal, so that is going to be inside of utility. So we can go here, change device, utility, and now we can see that we have a volume pedal. So that's a pretty nice addition. Nothing really particularly special, but we also have, of course, a new wah. So this is going to be the uh, Crybaby wah from Dunlop. This is the Clyde McCoy signature, so we'll try that. Just activate that block and our Proton Pedals Dead Horse. Another thing that I'll go over while we're inside of the wah section is assigning to an expression pedal. This has now been redesigned. The UI before was a little bit confusing. Now I think it's a lot cleaner. So right now we're on expression one, which is going to be the forward and backward uh, actual movement of the pedal. As you can see right now, it's not assigned to anything. We'll just hit assign to wah. And now you can see that we can go through the entire range, or you can, of course, as you could before, limit the range. Expression two is going to be your uh, foot switch for the pedal itself. So this is going to be a little bit hard to show since I'm not actually having the pedal on the ground, but we'll try. Wow. 
So you can hear the wah going. So pretty nice new effect. Nothing particularly groundbreaking, but definitely nice to have more stuff. All right, so another thing that is a pretty welcome change here is that now we have an updated UI for EQs. So if we go here to the parametric three or the parametric eight, they have both been updated. So now you can see that we have this and we also have a new uh, icon for bypass now. It looks like a circle with a line through it. If it's bypassed, if it's not, then it's uh, active. So the UI has been slightly updated here. So we can go ahead do our normal stuff here. You can change, make it a, a low pass, make it a high pass, um, you know, do all of the stuff that you could before, but I think that the UI is a little bit cleaner this time. Um, again, nothing particularly groundbreaking, but again, nice new features to have. Another thing that is really exciting uh, for me and probably one of the most exciting features of this update is the new uh, gig view. So inside of gig view, now we have a complete redesign. You can see that we have uh, the ability to rename our scenes directly from inside gig view without ever having to leave. That makes the workflow so much nicer than it was before. So we also have a brand new keyboard here. So if we want to go ahead and use any of the secondary functions, you can now just press and hold. So you can see that we get the three, four, you can also change the color. So let's say that we want to have blue, just hit save there. Now we have that blue scene. If we want to swap it to a different uh, scene, we can just press the pedal. And now you see that our scene A is now scene B. We also have the ability to copy a scene. So we can copy that scene to uh, A. And now you can see that A and B are identical. So that is a pretty cool thing. Additionally, if you have any uh, dual blocks, so if you assign two pedals to a single block, now you can actually change the name of that, which I'm uh, kind of surprised that they didn't have this earlier, but I'm so excited that it's here now because when you're doing a gig, especially if you have a bunch of these, it can be really easy to forget exactly which one does what. Now you can clearly label exactly what your pedal is doing. So that is really exciting. And you don't even have to leave Geek View to do that. So that's pretty cool. Another thing as far as the UI is concerned, we can now just tap and hold here on the modes configuration. You now see that we have uh, our modes right there. You can tap this little info button. It'll tell you about all of the MIDI uh, controls. So there's also updates to the file system directory. So you can now, again, as we could before in a previous version, just touch and hold, and we can move it over top of another preset and you can just swap the two. You can also overwrite, you can copy presets that way. So if you wanna copy a preset to another uh, bank, you can do that. Finally, with this particular menu, you can also go ahead here and directly upload uh, presets to the cloud if you want to do that. If you're not signed into Wi-Fi, you'll also have a little uh, icon there that'll quickly take you to the Wi-Fi settings so that we can set that up. And also there will be another button if you're not logged into Cortex Cloud that'll take you to the login page so that we can quickly get up and running. So that's pretty nice. You don't have to go ahead and fish through the uh, main settings menu anymore. Additionally, another feature that's kind of small but pretty welcome is uh, the updates to the tuner. So if we go ahead here, press on the tuner, now you'll see that the UI has been slightly changed, nothing major, but with the uh, mute button now, what's really nice is that we have a color-coded encoder. So the uh, encoder LED will light up red when it's muted and it'll light up white when it's not muted so that we can clearly see when your guitar is going to be going through the house or not. And for those of you guys who like using MIDI with your Quad Cortex, MIDI messages, the control features, uh, visibility have been changed a little bit. So now instead of being a simple on off toggle, now you can only toggle between specific states like on or off. So in the past, CC45 values 1 to 120 
value 0 to 127, we're tuner on off. CC46, value 0 to 127, we're open and close gig view. CC48, value 64 to 127, we're open and close the looper UI. In the new configuration, CC45, 46, and 48, now, if you use values 0 to 63, that's going to be your off view, and 64 to 127 are going to be your on view. So that's going to be the same for your tuner, your gig view, and your looper. Additionally, with the freeze pedal, if we go ahead and add that, if you forget where it is, it's in morph. So go here, morph, freeze, add that now. They've clarified this a little bit by making the freeze actually a button. So this was not the case before, but it is now. So if we go ahead and play something, you can now just press freeze and it'll keep sustaining that for as long as you want. And then you can just press it one more time and it'll release. I think it's a little bit clearer than it was before. Before it was um, kind of using like the bypass uh, sec, the bypass mode, which was a little bit odd. Several devices have also been renamed, so if you don't see the old name, don't worry, everything's still here. Your favorite device is still on the Quad Cortex. So in particular, that's going to be the UK C15 Boost is now the UK C15 Top Boost. US HP Tweed Twin Bright Jumped is now US HP Twin Bright Patch. US Tweed Baseland Bright Patch Jumped is now US Tweed Baseland Bright Patch. US Tweed Baseland Normal Jumped is now US Tweed Baseland Normal Patch. And Ping Pong Delay is now Simple Ping Pong Delay. Regarding delays, now there's dynamic parameters that have been added to some of the pre-existing delay devices as well as the new ones. So if you want to enable these dynamic parameters, just go to the dynamic mode and parameter and select dock or gate. So existing delay devices that uh, now have this new feature are the digital delay, mono and stereo, as well as the dual delay. So if we go ahead here to delays, we can now go ahead and change device and we'll just go to dual delay. And that is going to be on page two. You can see Dyn mode. We can now just change that. So now we can do a gate or we can do duck. So again, little updates, but nice to see that we're getting more functionality and features out of these delays. And the new devices um, with these parameters are the reverse delay and reverse dual delay. So both of the new uh, delays have this as well. A stereo width parameter has also been added to the simple ping pong delay so that we can change how uh, closely centered or uh, more stereo your uh, delay is going to be. So that's another thing that's pretty nice. Finally, in the global sense, audio latency uh, as a whole has been improved. There's also uh, minor updates to UI components and messages, as you saw with the bypass. Uh, there's now a new icon for that. Other little things here and there, just things that enhance your overall experience. So they're not super relevant, so they're not discussed in uh, great detail in the news release, but they're there. And so that's pretty much it for the new Chorus 2.1 update. Definitely a lot of new and nice updates. I have to say I'm so excited that Neural DSP is continuing to give us more and more value out of this amazing device. When I bought this all the way back in uh, 2020 when it released, I really loved it then. And all of the updates that have come out since have made this thing absolutely amazing. It's kind of like you're getting a new device every time that they come out with a major update like this, since you get so many new plugins, so many new cabs and IRs and other things like that. Really exciting. I know that all of us are waiting for the desktop controller and even more so the eventual plugin support, but definitely just continue to be patient. You know, it takes a lot of time. There's a lot of development that goes into it. And especially with Neural DSP, you know, they really want to do things right. Um, they don't want to rush and uh, release something that's not good. So just hang with them. Everything's going to be okay. And we're going to get those features eventually. 
In my opinion, though, even without those updates, this still remains one of the most powerful devices for professionals and hobbyists alike. And I love the fact that they're continuing to update this and continuing to support it, bring us more value. And we don't even have to pay for these updates. So I think that that is a really important thing. And it's so exciting that Neural DSP have continued to push the bounds with this particular device. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe for more content, and I will catch you guys in the next video.